Hello all. Today we have a very interesting guest. Today we have architect Shalin Sharma with us. I'll introduce Shalin Sharma sir to you. Shalin sir has over 25 years practicing architecture. He has taught at USAP that is IP University and Kamal Rahaja in Mumbai. He did his masters from Demont University in UK in a subject that we are going to talk about soon and his bachelor's from TVB School of Habitat Studies. but today we are not going to talk about his architectural practice or any other thing we are going to mainly focus on how he has explored the medium of film in the context of architecture so sir how are you and uh, how is it going i'm fine uh, <clears throat> thank you raja for uh, uh, for uh, making me talk about a subject that is very close to my heart Right. so it's generally does not happen very frequently but uh, thank you for uh, you know uh, making this happen yeah thank you thank you for you know coming and you know like talking to me and you know it's really great uh, when all the viewers you know listen to your experience and your story because it's so unique because you you know you filmed joseph allen stein you made movies on architecture for ugc so i'm sure all the viewers are going to be really really interested in you know knowing your about your journey and how you did this unique thing in architecture so sir you know i'm going to ask you that you've been at the forefront of you know videographing architects and their work do you think this work has been neglected in india by the indian media by architects and all the others yes certainly it is not a uh, it has never sort of uh, formed a a kind it was always regarded as a niche field and uh, the result of which was that you know the most of the uh, funding agencies who would fund documentaries uh, would generally keep architecture away because for them architecture uh, was all about you know filming uh, heritage buildings to a certain extent they so they would say that a lot of work has been done on this so what different would you do uh in terms of making architectural films which yeah, i used to find it very difficult uh now ugc was one of the organizations which had an allocated budget and since most of the universities involved uh in in funding process were universities which had uh, either a, a, a department of history or uh, had a very strong department of architecture so it was easier for them to basically convince uh, the funding agencies but otherwise if i talk about uh, you know bigger agencies who fund documentaries for them architecture is a very niche field maybe because they know too little about it so so that was that was one of the drawbacks of uh, trying to pursue something and not getting funding for it as you must i have told you that lot of my projects got started because of the limited funding that i had myself but could never uh, you know uh, could not support any for funding from outside for several reasons so right right so so you know you like interviewed lot of big architects so you also interviewed hafiz contractor how was that interview what were the points he raised were there some radical points that he floated around in the interview if you could share something with us yeah it's it's been a long time now so i would say that i think it was 2003 or 2004 when uh, i got an opportunity to uh, sort of uh, interview him yes it, he's quite a dynamic uh, architect as we all know and is uh, full of ideas and and was very uh, you know a uh, nice to interact with in the sense uh, of you know um, of talking about his architecture and how uh, him you know being uh, you know um, uh, a kind of a controversial architect you know at that point of time and uh, so so it was it was interesting and uh, we did discuss a lot on uh, modernism and things like that and uh, how and at that point of time hiranandani complex was very fresh and uh, you know it was already uh, at, uh, you know uh, formed uh, this uh, part of discussions of important uh, uh, you know townships which were coming up and so so it was interesting yes uh, there were several points which were discussed uh, relating to that and uh, so yes it's part it's part of the film that that has never been 
made so far so it's still sitting down somewhere in my wardrobe or somewhere <laughs> i hope we see that movie soon you know maybe yeah. something works out and that movie is released hopefully uh, yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> in delhi sir the lodi institutional area is also called stinabad you know this is like a small area that is named after an architect this because the, yeah. of the works of joseph allen stein there is a movie yeah. that is you know made on that you made on him could you share that experience and like why did you like do that movie and how was it shot and all those things around it sir yeah it was uh, uh, there's a whole story behind it and uh, you know when i had very uh, recently come back from uh, from england after finishing my masters which itself the final project was on film and architecture and i was exploring film medium to uh, to you know discuss ideas and uh, to uh, discuss uh, how architecture is happening in india so uh, rather than writing i thought the visual medium would fit the most because architecture is also a visual medium so so why you know uh, why write about it why not show it so at that point of time well most of my teachers had actually uh, were apprentices to mr stein so i quite uh, was aware of mr stein's work uh, through my uh, br course also and uh, so uh, and i was looking for a subject uh, to make a film and uh, uh, so i just thought and i came to know that he is not keeping well and so i just thought that you know i had already made uh, these uh, a few documentaries for ugc on uh, on early chalukyan temples for for uh, for uh, mysore university and uh, i was thinking that you know much, i must do something which is more contemporary and something to do with the architects who have contributed to a great deal to us so and then you know one thing led to another and i came to know that you know um, mr stein is not keeping well and uh, and i just thought that this is probably the right time to record the thoughts that mr stein had about architecture and uh, and uh, he has done a body of work which still is more contemporary than you know most of the works that we see nowadays so so yes that was the thought and then uh, obviously i had to take permission from his family and uh, was able to get some time and uh, small times basically uh, i still remember these were winter days so uh, mr stein would spend about a half an hour or maybe an hour uh, sitting in his veranda and uh, you know in the sun so that was the time which was allotted to me by his son and he said that you know that's the that's probably the best time when you can uh, to him so well to so here i was i took my cameraman i took the camera equipment in those days the camera equipment used to be very heavy you know so the digital camera had not come uh, you know or was not affordable last bit of uh, of mr stein's shoot i did uh, with a digital camera uh, but the earlier bits i had to take the beta cam which was a big camera and you know it required some kind of lighting and the sound and everything and uh, so yeah uh, so i started recording him a bit by bit say sometimes 20 minutes sometimes half an hour and then in between because i was hiring the camera for the entire day then after interviewing which used to be uh, in the morning say around 8:30 9:30 so i had the rest of the day with me so i would take that camera and the cameraman uh, in and around delhi and would uh, go to visit his buildings like triveni india habitat center iisc and all that the entire steinabad area the lodi gardens and um, so i would film that so so that way i was able to capture a lot of things and then uh, you know going next day morning and talking talking to him about how his buildings are at this moment which he was very curious to know you know for example he was quite disturbed that iic was painted white you know which was supposed to be exposed concrete and so he would ask me have they i had sent them a suggestion that uh, you know you should not paint it white but is it still white and i was uh, i had to tell him that it is still white sir and uh, so which was like uh, he had uh, mentioned this in the film also that he is very disappointed that you know the uh, the parts of the building which were supposed to be exposed concrete were painted white whereas that was not my intention as an architect so so all these things so very small anecdotes and things like that which uh, which i still remember and i'm happy that i was able to cover him and record him so yeah so that was it So thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing the experience of Steenabad and how you shot 
Joseph Allen Stein. So you know, like uh, in the introduction, when I was introducing you, I did not mention that you are the current head of World University of Design at Sony Pat, which is like like a leading college of architecture in Delhi NCR area. So, so from working as an architect to your keen interest in video graphing architecture, you are now you know, as I said, heading an architecture college. Do you think videography can be used as a powerful tool to teach architecture? Yes, yes, certainly, certainly. And what are we all doing nowadays? You know, in a lockdown situation. So uh, this is the this is the right time to explore uh, medium. Like we are having a Zoom talk. It's also a visual medium. You know, so right. we are not sitting. Uh, you know, facing each other. So it's basically the kind of a setup that I'm showing you, right. and the kind of setup that you're showing me. Yeah. I am bound right. to look at it. You know, right. so so there's a focus. So uh, you are also focused that you can't see anything, and that is the power of films. You know, absolutely. So, <laughs> so, so, uh, so any filmmaker, if you ask them, they will only show you the things that they want you to see. Right. And apart from that, so so it becomes a very powerful medium. You know, so so it can be uh, experimented in terms of teaching as well. Right. You know, uh, so I think uh, we have just. Uh, touched upon it and uh, i think it it needs to be explored more than what we are using it as at the moment right right so so i'll just tell you one of the very interesting studios that we had uh, like uh, uh, we have a very uh, very um, important section in in our architectural teaching which happens to be uh, uh, you know the related studies program in which we take the students to certain historic sites or maybe they could be urban villages or they could be townships generally right. townships and then so this time we weren't able to take anybody so um, and the plan was to go to Padmavaram Palace and uh, in Kerala and so what we did was that uh, we experimented with this medium in which you know there are there are these two three students who are from Kerala. Right. So they somehow, uh, you know, got the permission to visit Padmanabhapur Palace, and uh, so these three students, keeping all the COVID uh, precautions and everything, so they went with their smartphones to the right. site. Right. And the rest of the class got connected uh, through whatever medium that they had. I think it was Zoom or some something like that. Right. And we we had one of uh, uh, the experts. I think. From SPA, who's done his uh, PhD or uh, is pursuing his PhD on Padmavapura, somewhere again uh, from some part, and uh, we did the uh, streaming live streaming together. Wow! So it was like a uh, so it was like a live experience that you could uh, you know get of Padmavapuram. So these students would go there and point at uh, you know certain parts of the palace and and the expert would tell them you know so it was like uh, one of the experiments that we did uh, with with uh, you know media and uh, got one of our very important studies done sitting at home absolutely you know? absolutely 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 i mean that was just it's it's all about how you you know uh, harness a particular technology and how you harness a particular medium for uh, you know teaching architecture and exploring it for our own use so next thing sir uh, your masters is called prasada i want to you know open up open it up for everybody it's called practice research and advancement in south asian design south and asian. architecture it's an interesting yeah. you know word and a sentence to you know read about i'm sure you enjoyed a lot you know doing this course yeah. so can you tell us about what was this course and what was the learning sir well, it was a very interesting mix. Uh, so uh, we were asked to basically pick up uh, one or the other topic because it was a two two years uh, master's program. So uh, Dr. Adam Hardy, who was running uh, uh, the the course there, he has uh, uh, done uh, extensive work on Indian temples okay. and has taken out a very very uh, you know comprehensive book. On, on temple architecture of India. So, uh, well, he happened to be uh, in India and he was doing a workshop in Ahmedabad in Sept. Right. And I came to know uh, from my college, you know, there was one uh, poster which was, uh, so I immediately got hooked onto it and I went to Sept because one of my friends was doing his master's. I had passed out, you know, so, right. so I had cleared my BR. Right. So that was the time when I was uh, basically looking for any, 
uh, uh, you know uh, what to do next so uh, so i happened to uh, so i i went to ahmedabad and i asked a friend of mine who was doing his masters in landscape from sept and i said that you know so uh, dr adam hardy is coming over there and i want to attend his workshop so he arranged it was for sept students but uh, then he got a special permission and uh, uh, and that's how i came to know so uh, there was a, a lot of interaction with dr adam hardy so i did pick up uh, temple architecture as one of my uh, uh, one of my uh, the research subjects right. but now uh, having picked that up i just didn't want to write anything on it right so so i suggested this to adam and i said you know i want to pick up a visual medium to okay. explain uh, you know my research right. so he said you know you will have to then because i had very limited knowledge on film so he helped me getting enrolled on to the film school in de montfort university okay so the basics of filmmaking i received there so you know uh, i used to send a re- send in a request to the teachers of the film school that you know whenever they had time say half an hour or maybe one hour they would help me you know uh, you know operate the camera or tell me how to take the shots and and what is the rhythm of taking shots so i so that way is and so in between the course actually i came back because i had written to the mysore university with an idea of making a film on uh, early chalukyan temples which was one part of our course actually so i selected badami patadakal laiholi and uh, so so they immediately said that you know we are looking for somebody to make this film and why don't you come over and uh, for the myself so i came back from england in between and i i made those films i did edit a part of it in england but most of it was done here in india so i submitted it so they gave me a certificate so that uh, that in, that went in as one of my projects actually uh, for prasada so right so that's how it all started actually so, okay. okay so okay. those those three films were basically my very first films uh, not very nicely made because i was still learning uh, they were very informative though but uh, later on i realized that you know uh, probably my short taking abilities and you know so those were quite weak okay so which which i improved upon uh, as time passed but right. those were the first three films which i would not like to show anybody nowadays <laughs> <laughs> understood sir understood so you know yeah. now uh, thank you for that uh, you know very uh, vibrant answer uh, so with respect to you know tvb school of habitat studies so you have been associated with tvb and you've also done your ma- bachelor's at tvb so i'm you know i've heard from a lot of people that tvb school was a revolution in itself so are there some lessons that you learned there that are you know of use to you even today all of them okay <laughs> there is not uh, a, a a single lesson that i have learned on my own okay <laughs> like, so all the lessons were taught to me by my teachers there and uh, i have tried to stick on to them uh, you know uh, mm. like uh, like canons and i i so it, there is there is no freshness in me in terms of ideas as such i'm just trying to understand the same lessons and trying to apply them in different ways yeah so so okay could you like tell a, us a few a one or two mystery. tell us one or two like anecdotal uh, important lessons that you keep sticking with you to i i i i think uh, a couple of them can apply to everybody it was not nothing specific to tvb it was about you know uh, how do you uh, stick on to your ideas you know right. so so if your basis is right you know so so if your principle if your principally right because uh, i think from the very first day onwards one thing which became very evident uh, was uh, Uh, which our teachers taught us was that you know your relevance to the society so how are you as an architect relevant to the society is something that you should always you know uh, take priority and you should basically work in that direction otherwise right. you're only catering to yourself but the architect's role extends itself to to the to the society to the neighborhood to the city and overall so 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 do look at that so i think everything uh, you know uh, happened around that and uh, definitely there was a, there was a very strong uh, input that we received on the theoretical aspect of architecture right and um, and architecturally speaking i think all exercises that we did 
even whether you call it first year, second year, third year, were urban uh, urban based exercises. So from the very uh, beginning, the the context uh, played a very important role, and uh, and city played a very important role. So much so that uh, you know they used to say that uh, you know a window is a city and. Uh, and the city is the window so so do not uh, you know <laughs> so so that was the kind of uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, background at which we worked so i think that it was a very strong basis which uh, if you uh, i think all of us uh, as long as i remember my batchmates or my seniors or my juniors we still sort of reverberate the same uh, notions that we learned at that point of time which is very good so so whenever we meet we are almost on the same page you know there is there is hardly so so that i think those uh, that is the uh, strength of the principles that you uh, receive and uh, you know you retain while going so it's been almost 30 years now so yeah <laughs> thank you so sir you know uh, like in the architectural syllabus in the, all the syllabi there is a mention of architectural photography you know earlier it used to be very seriously done we had this dark room and all those developing and all those things happening and it was a very you know big thing to be able to use a camera because it was such a you know difficult instrument but today because of mobile phone you know has like photography as a allied subject as such lost its sheen or do you think like it has, it has evolved into something new. What do you think, sir? Well, if you'll ask me my opinion, I will say that uh, with the growing technology, the craft becomes easy. Right. Uh, but uh, along with that, the methodology that you apply yourself to, uh, you know, to harness that craft uh, becomes very weak. Right. So, you know, uh, earlier, because uh, like you mentioned, the dark room and the camera, uh, you know, uh, so one would take uh, and the cost of the role, the film role, uh, that every time you would go out to shoot with those uh, 24 or 36 shots that the role carried, you had to be very careful, Yeah. you know, that you should not uh, overshoot so that something gets missed. Yes. You know, uh, so even for that matter, when, when we made our first film, it was uh, on 16 mm. And I think uh, one uh, roll, which used to cost around 10,000 rupees, was 400 feet oh, roll, which right. would last for four minutes. Okay. So, uh, so which was which was the cost that you had to pay, you know. So one would be very careful. One would do the re rehearsals and things before they start rolling in, you know, because then. Uh, so I think uh, with the advancement of technology, which is nearly free now, you know. Yes. So, but with that, you know, the the uh, the input uh, of the users. I will not say all of them. There are certain people who are using it uh, uh, very finely. But you know, with with this technology, uh, I think you have to be even more careful, even even more if you want to really uh, you know get the uh, craft right. Right. You should not take it for granted. So what I think that is the correct word that I can use now that people have started taking it for granted. Yes. So that's where the that's where the craft becomes weak, you know. So. Right, right, right. Right, right. So, sir, you know, uh, I said in the beginning that I won't talk about you as a teacher or as an architect, but still, I want to ask you that you're currently the head of World University of Design, the architecture department of the architecture school in it. What is this vision of this college? I mean, how is it set apart from other schools? Tell us about it. I mean, well, uh, as I uh, as I already said that the principles that I am still carrying with me are basically the ones that I learned from TVB school. Yeah. Maybe uh, the way we are applying them may might have changed a little bit because each year a new set of students come in. So we also have to, you know, uh, uh, reinvent our curriculum. Yeah. But the basis yeah. is that, uh, that you know, the, the students who are coming in, we want to make them conscious students. We want them to come into the society as conscious professionals, understanding that, you know, they have a relevance in the society. They're not only working for themselves or for a handful of clients, right. you know, they, their, right. their contribution uh, can be extended uh, and can be made relevant at a larger level, you know. Right. So at a macro level, they can uh, basically uh, be of certain relevance, which is also important for the architectural profession. Right. You know, uh, right. A, uh, because you know the awareness of the profession is very low in the yes. society. It is because um, most of the architect, Architectural students of architects who are practicing, they themselves 
to a certain extent don't know their relevance in the society or maybe they know but they're not applying for it or they're not uh, taking it further than that yes so i think first of all is that we we generally tell our students that you know they are very relevant to the society maybe as relevant as the doctors lawyers policemen are because yes. you are finally shaping up the urban context yes so yes. Yes. so your your contribution is will stay there you know you're making a permanent change to a yes. particular site to a particular place you know so if we take the life of a building to be 100 years then yes. your creation will stay there for 100 years you absolutely. know absolutely so so for good or bad yeah it's best that it is for good so so make sure that whatever you making you are completely changing the the the, the context for 100 years at least absolutely. unless you know so yes. so think about it and then and then then make something so that that uh, principally is something uh, we are basically telling our students again and again and, and quite a good bunch of students that we have yeah great so great uh, so you mentioned about uh, the profession of architecture how architecture should be done and you also mentioned about the low awareness levels of architect about you know uh, of architecture so what do you think is the future of architecture in india i mean you've been like seeing it from all the points of view so tell us about it well uh, the future is very bright and i won't say uh, uh, but again while saying that the future is also in our hands so it's basically how we uh, approach the future will make all the difference so if we get the set of students uh, or practitioners you know or researchers uh, who are conscious about these things and uh, you know we can uh, we can uh, uh, we can sort of prove our relevance in the society yes. i think the, the the future is immense you know with all these concepts of smart cities and everything coming in we you know who was required to make all these uh, the cities and all these iconic buildings they are architects you know absolutely so yeah. so the only uh, so so you can understand the kind of uh, relevance we can hold so uh, so maybe yes the future is uh, very bright it, it's just that we have to basically approach it in the correct manner absolutely absolutely so. absolutely yeah 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 so you know thank you you shared a lot today i mean regarding your uh, you know masters which is like a, like a unique subject about your filming joseph allenstein about you introducing and you know uh, exploring the medium of film for in the context of architecture and you know your experience at tvb school and all the other great work that you've done especially for ugc and uh, you know you also taught at kamal rehj and now you're heading a college in delhi ncr so sir thank you for all that you know insight that you've shared with us can i request you at the end to you know to conclude to give a message to the viewers sir well uh the, the message would be that you know uh, especially when it when we are uh, you know giving a message at this point of time when we are basically facing problems uh, at yes. a larger level i think uh, uh, i will connect it to you know the uh, to the consciousness uh, that i talked to you about uh, about the architectural students that we so i think uh, we need a more uh, conscious approach towards making our cities making our houses because you know uh, when something like this happens i think we have seen it uh, uh, once in our lifetime which is yeah. should be once in a lifetime kind of a situation i hope we don't repeat it again yes but uh, you know you must have realized that how uh, everything came to a full stop including Absolutely. the cities and everything so yes. so we we were basically uh, you know uh, that whole uh, uh, urbanness uh, was missed you know which which affected uh, the psyche of lot of people so yes. you know one should understand that you know that uh, urbanity is such an important part of uh, of our human development yes. and the moment you cut that that off you know it just breaks the very delicate balance that that we have with the vanity which which we generally take it for granted you know yes, yes, a very yes. small thing like walking freely on the road yeah. and <clears throat> breathing heavily smelling you know the the bazaars and you know the, the you know so there is uh, all that uh, we are missing out you know even though Absolutely. even the lockdown is opening up but it's still not the same you know not the same not with the, the mask same. on your face you cannot so we basically that uh, 
uh, that cutting away of uh, urbanness or the urbanity has actually affected us very badly. Absolutely. So I hope that should not happen with our children or their children in the future to come. So we have to be very conscious the way we design all these places, you know, even if we are stuck by something like this, our cities, even at a smaller le level, should be able to operate, you yes. know, that we don't have to think about shutting them off. Absolutely. So I, I think there are a lot of thoughts which are going on at the moment. A lot of people who are, have started working on it, uh, who have realized, you know, that it was a big loss. Absolutely. It was not about the loss of not going to the job or it was not about, you know, not earning money. Yes, it was for certain people. Yes, definitely not to take that away. But, uh, you know, that missing part was uh, all those uh, enjoyments that uh, urbanness gives you is, is, was, is irreplaceable, you know. Yes, yes. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, thank you. I mean, this is a great message uh, that you've given, sir. And uh, all that insights that you've given today, I'm sure all the viewers are going to really, really gain from it. And, you know, for all the viewers, there's a link to sir's work in the description below. And, you know, we're going to share a lot of stuff that sir has done in the description below. So do check the description for sure of this video. And thank you, sir. You know, it was really, really great to have thank you. you thank you very thank much, you. sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.